So, Talo Falava, Malo Elele, Fakalo Falahia, to Nisa Bolivanaka, Kiarana, Talohani, and Kiora. And um, on behalf of, um, I'm just standing in on behalf of Dr. Colin Tuitonga, the Chief Executive of the uh, Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs, and he gives us apologies. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. Um, I want to first acknowledge um, Dr. Malakai uh, Kolomatangi and the University of Canterbury for organising the venue. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, this morning, this gathering is part of, part of a series of gatherings that the Ministry has organised. And it's an opportunity for the new Minister of Pacific Island Affairs, Honourable Hekia Parata, to meet with Pacific Communities. Last week we had a very positive meeting in Auckland with Pacific Communities and this is the second uh, of our meetings. I also want to uh, acknowledge um, Alfred Nauru, uh, Member of Parliament here, and uh, also want to acknowledge all the community leaders, uh, the church ministers and representatives of the various Pacific organisations and agencies that are gathered here today. Uh, in terms of the programme this morning, it's a very simple programme. Um, there might, uh, you're probably thinking, is there an opportunity for me to ask questions? Um, just want to emphasise that this is the first of a series of meetings set uh, with the Minister. So this is the first meeting, which is an initial meeting greet. There'll be an opportunity of the Minister to highlight just uh, who key priorities for the government in terms of Pacific communities in New Zealand. But um, this is the start and there will be opportunities in the future for you to engage with the, with the Minister. Um, as part of our Pacific Protocol, we always open our funnels or gatherings with a prayer, and I'd just like to invite uh, Father uh, Paolo, if he could come forward and, and offer a word of prayer. Thank you. Honourable Minister, Taumatua, elderly, ladies and gentlemen, a warm Pacific greeting to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to first of all uh, thank you, local manager and your staff, members uh, of the Minister of uh, Pacific Island Affairs, for this opportunity to lead us in a holy devotion this morning. So let us worship God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Was o na oli oli ne lo lo so ya yesu wa ya fa chosen this reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses, only one verse, verse 8, as the guiding principle of our dedication today. It says, speak up for people who cannot speak for themselves. Protect the rights of all who are helpless. Speak for them and be a righteous child. God protect the rights of the poor and the needed. Pacific families' well-being, especially education, is a cornerstone of God's creation. Pacific, Pacific families, for all of us, are our first identity, our history, 
and our future that shape us with the Christian values of humanity, just equality, compassion, and above all, love. The reading today reminds us all of our duty and responsibility, especially the education of our young people and to our families. Because if our young people are happy, we all happy. Each of other and our community so we may serve God as he wishes us to. Honorable Minister Hidya Barata, it is a great joy, a huge joy, and a blessing for us all here today. We pray for your good health, especially, and well-being. We thank you for being with us today. It's a dream for our people here in South Island to see a beautiful, honorable minister. <laughs> Not only for the Minister of Pacific Island Affairs, but also, she's also a Pacific of, uh, Minister of Education, just to remind us that. She's also a Minister of Education. So we are very grateful <laughs> to see you this morning. And may God bless you now and the future. I will conclude with a, a prayer in my own Samoan tongue. Le tuta sur payalo matu tama. Wo matu fi thilo van nita we fa filo ai le minista ule ngato tengato pasifika ya wa onga fo. Olo mato fi fi fa ya ela le tua mato che via tua ima fa ftai. Ole wo mato fi lo ai mala wo wo. Awon mole le tua se ye fa manu ya tu ya te ia a o fi ngai mala na ngadu nga. Ole ngata ito tonu a te ro ya fa pe fo ito tonu on malo. Yo sha wo ngai fa to va. Ai mato te tonu ya ngai ya le fa to va e ta ua molo finga nga. Ole o mato felo a ile nei tai ao si o mato so ala pule falo ngolo ngo matara tara noa ya wa se manu ya wa lo ma fa na ya wa onga e to tonu ba nga ta e to tonu o south island ya fa pevo i new sila to ya fa so ma ilo nga nga pa ia ma tu fa ma ya ma to ta pe to fu stanga ta ma se sa o le nei as fa manu ya fo ile Leo te ita ia nga luenga tangata pasifika i tono o kala iste te nei. Ia mali la tom tanga luenga. Fa manu ia i la mato maftanga nei aso. Ia mata la wafio, fa iu foe la wafio de nei aso. Mo ia tele a i pese li iga la wafio. God our Father, send us your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. Especially we are here for the future education of our young people. How lovely. How lovely to see the minister on a pole with us today. I ask your blessing to him. I ask your blessing to all of us here today, now and forever. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Father, for that uh, worship and that prayer. Um, before the Minister comes up to speak, I just want to give a bit of background in terms of uh, the Minister, Honourable Hekia Parata. Uh, in terms of her background, uh, she came into Parliament in 2008 as part of the general election and previously held the Women's Affairs and Ethnic Affairs portfolios and was also the Acting Minister of Energy and Resources and Associate Minister for ACC and the Community and Volunteer Sector. She has extensive experience in both the public and private sector holding senior management uh, policy roles and uh, also uh, runs a successful uh, or ran a successful company with her husband, Sir Whitty Gardner. She also um, has represented New Zealand at the New Zealand Embassy in Washington DC and at a number of uh, multinational forums including the South Pacific Forum, the United Nations Forum and the World Bank Forum. Uh, if you can show your appreciation, put your hands together for the <laughs> Uh, thank you.
te nā koutou, no te mea ke te waipaunu mu tātou, me mihi au ki a ngai tahu, kei a rātou te mana whenua wai tēnei rōwhi. A hoi anō, huri noa i a tātou, te nā koutou ngā waka katoa o te mōna nui ākiva e tau mai nei ki Aotearoa nei. Um, good morning, afternoon. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to come and meet me and meet each other. Um, I do apologise for being a little late this morning. Uh, as is the way with women in particular, we always try to do too much and sit in lots more than a make, make a minute expand to ten. And so um, we're, we're visiting as many places as we possibly can in Christchurch today. Um, as Reynolds already said, however, um, this is the first of many engagements that I hope to have. Uh, with the Pacifica community in Christchurch, as well as across uh, the country. Um, and I particularly want to acknowledge what a tough time you've all had here in Canterbury. I know that last week was the um, memorial um, of the anniversary of the, um, the major earthquake, <coughs> but you all have had to suffer through and be resilient about the ongoing tremors of um, the own locals. Um, and I just want to pay tribute to you all because you have kept your families, your churches, your communities together over this time. And it has been hard and it's been challenging and it still is. So I understand that that is an ongoing challenge, but I want to, um, to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge the work of um, the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs. It's a very small ministry um, with very dedicated staff who themselves have had to confront these personal challenges while also continuing their work in the ministry. So I want to thank Rino and all the team um, down here um, in Te Waipaunamu for the work they have done, are doing and will continue to do um, over the months and years ahead of us. Um, so thank, thank you to all of you. I've been asked to um, just outline what uh, our government's priorities are and what my priorities are as a minister. And you've had a little bit of an introduction about who I am. I want to tell you some stuff that's uh, kind of more real about who I am. So these are positions that I have held. But I want to tell you that um, my mother had 10 children, um, five girls and five boys. I'm the oldest daughter in uh, my family. Uh, eight of us grew up together. But a brother and sister grew up in a, my, our cousin's family because um, that was the way we organised our whānau. Um, I grew up in Ruatoria, population about 900, about 3,000 at Christmas uh, when everybody <laughs> comes home. So as small as some of the communities or um, villages that many of you and your family and Aina have come from. Um, we grew up where my, both my parents worked, well actually, they both worked, but my father was the only one really employed. My mother worked as well, but with unpaid work in the community, in our family, supporting us in school, our community activities, and, and raising all of us, and actually most of the kids on our street and in our community as well. Um, my community was very economically poor. So I went to Desal Negative One schools, my primary school and my secondary school. But we were culturally and socially rich. Um, and I grew up in a mainly um, Te Reo Māori speaking community. Well, actually it was, was mainly Ngāti Pro speaking community. Um, and I went to, and the schools I went to would have been 98% Ngāti Pro, 1% Māori and 1% Pāwani. So, so that's the kind of background that I come from. When, um, when my sisters and I wanted to go to university, there weren't student loans available at that time. We all had jobs from as soon as we could get them, doing, doing the paper run, working in the local dairy, flipping burgers in the local clay cart, um, cleaning floors at the hospital in Gisborne, picking up rubbish on the beach, you know, all of those kinds of things that many of us are, are familiar with. Um, and my brothers, they worked in crappy jobs, actually, uh, to help support us to go through university, and then we did the same for them. 
And so um, when I grow up, <laughs> when I grow up and I get to the stage where I can go and have an overseas experience, then that's what I want to do. But otherwise, all of my life I have been working in some form or another. Absolutely adored my mother, absolutely my heroine always. Uh, she passed away a couple of years ago. I saw what ill health did to her. I want good health uh, for me, for my daughters, for our community. I know what a challenge these things can be. Um, and so I am committed to working hard uh, with you and for you and on your behalf. Um, but primarily with you. One of the, th if any of you are interested, you could go onto the internet or have your grandchildren or children. Uh, this is what I say, whenever I'm wanting something and I say to my girls, how do I get such and such? And they, they're very sarcastic. Oh, mum, you mean on the world wide web? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is what I mean. Um, and so, uh, so, so, so without uh, getting too, too distracted, you know, I want the very best for my daughters. And I, so therefore I want the very best for the world that they are a part of. And what I know is, and here are my priorities in Pacific Island Affairs and in education, is education, education, education. Mm -hmm. uh, my brothers and sisters and I know that it is a passport to a better quality of life. All of us work harder so our next generation can have a better life. And actually that means all of us having the best possible education. But what I was starting off to say to you when I said I want to work with you is that um, the speech I gave when I first went into Parliament in 2008, um, and Alfred's will be the same, and I'm going to ask Alfred to, to say a few words as well. Um, you get to say why you've come to Parliament, what difference you want to make. So if any of you are interested in knowing a little bit more about what drives me, why I'm here doing this particular job at this particular time, then you can just Google my maiden speech and for 10 minutes listen to how passionately opposed I am to dependency on the state and how passionately <coughs> for I am for each of us to be educationally and economically <coughs> independent and for that to be part of our families and our communities. Not in isolation, not alone, but as part of the cultural communities that we were born into or have chosen to be a part of. I believe very much in speaking my own language, Te Reo Māori. I grew up uh, at a time and in a context where uh, my mother, it was her first language and it was her last language. She absolutely loved speaking Ngāti Pro. But she was of that generation where the law in New Zealand was uh, that she wasn't allowed to speak it. So when we were growing up in our household, we weren't allowed to speak Māori. And as a result, we all wanted to speak Māori. So as soon as you can't do something, that's what you want. So all my brothers and sisters and I uh, all speak Māori to some degree or another. And then when I became a mother of my fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful, smart aleck, two cheeky daughters, um, we wanted them to be able to have Pireo Māori and we wanted them to know their grandmother and their aunts and uncles and their first and second and third and fourth and fifth cousins. We wanted them to know what their cultural identity was and so you should know this about me, I practice what I preach. So we up sticks from Wellington and we went home and we went back and we all lived in our village of Ruatoria for five years so that our girls would grow up speaking Te Reo Māori as their first language. So that, and we um, built our home so that my mother could live with us and my sister. And Well, many times about everybody was living with us and coming and going. And, and I absolutely love that extended no experience. But I know it's hard work as well. So yes, there are lots of virtues, but it's also hard work. And um, we all have to work away at keeping those relationships alive and part of who we are. So that's who I think we should be dependent on, is on each of ourselves, on our family, not on the state. And that's what language I think what we should do with languages. We should speak it first and foremost ourselves. Yes, the education system can assist, but actually the government does not come to our christenings because it's not their language. They don't come to our weddings or our birthdays or any of those important rituals that are a part of who we are as communities. 
So while the government can support <coughs> your and my language aspirations, it is not a government language. If we want Nguyen to be spoken and lived, if we want Tokeloan to be spoken and lived, if we want Samoan and Tongan and Cook Island and uh, Tuvaluan and Fijian to be spoken and lived, we have to speak and live these languages. The government can support to an extent, but it is your language and they need to be spoken in the churches, on the side of uh, the league field, on the side of the netball court, at church, wherever we gather, because that's how we will keep our languages alive. And by the way, I say the same thing about Te Reo Māori. We have to learn to speak it and speak it and speak it. And every week I'm on Te Karere, Māori News, 4.30 on a Monday, and it's me sitting an exam for all Māori speakers in New Zealand, because they all know I'm a second language speaker, because I get texts, <coughs> not bad. <laughs> Have you thought of using this word? <laughs> You're getting better. Um, so every week I'm on there practicing my te reo Māori in front of a country full of critics and examiners, but that's the thing. We've got to speak our language if we believe in our language. And our language is the vehicle of our identity. It is about why we are special. The stories of who we come from. Um, what our traditions are. What our relationships are with one another. The language is the true vehicle of the expression of that. And our culture, if it is to live and survive. And by that, I mean the great Polynesian culture, or the cultures of the Pacific, but then I mean the specific cultures within that, that make us who we are. It's fabulous, smart, beautiful, uh, dynamic, um, passionate Pacific Island people. That's who we are. So, as Minister of Pacific Island Affairs, I will work with you and my priorities in that regard, however, and let's also just remember this. The Pacific Island Affairs military, small. Very, 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 very small. Just over 40? 40 staff. Just over 40 staff. The ministry cannot do everything for everyone across the country. <coughs> Right? So we have to be more focused with the resource that we have available to us through the ministry on what it is we can do. And because, fortunately, I am also the Minister of Education, we are able to um, use those joint resources. So my focus is going to be on how we raise Pacifica educational achievement. The system has been failing um, Māori and Pacifica people from so low socioeconomic homes and those with special needs for far too long. And we must get past talking about that and doing something about that. And that means starting with early childhood education. We, you, have to get your babies and toddlers into early childhood education. There's a range of choices and there are models that I want to work with the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs on that might be more suitable to or, or better choices for Pacifica families. But we know that young people who've had early childhood education will do better in primary school and secondary school. That is what the research tells us. So we need to raise that participation. And we, over the last two years, have um, built, um, created 141 Pacifica services in early childhood education across New Zealand and we're putting a further $7 million into building six new language-based early childhood education centres over the next two years. But over and above that, we need to be doing more. We need to be doing more. In primary school, you, the mamas, the papas, the nannies, the aunties, the uncles, the brothers, the sisters, you need to know how well your children are doing at primary school. And you need to go in and say to principals and teachers you want to know. And if you're feeling shy, or you don't have confidence, then take your sister, your cousin, your auntie, whomever, to go in and find out how well are they doing and what do they need from you as well as the school. And as part of this, as I say, give your children and grandchildren, nieces and nephews, the gift of their heritage language at home. Help them to speak well whatever the Pacific language is that is priority in your home. Because if you speak one language really well, it is easier to pick up a second and a third and a fourth language. Mm -hmm. It is. And you know what I tell the kids in Porirua? 
because that's where I'm trying to be the MP. Um, uh, whenever I go to the, the schools in Cannons Creek or Waitangi Rua or Porirua East and I say, put up your hands if you come from a home where a language other than English is spoken. And almost all the hands go up. And then I say, now, keep your hand up if you can speak that language. And almost all the hands come down. Right. So I say to them, you go home and you say that you want to be able to learn to speak this language. And you know what? It builds a bigger brain. Because it does. It creates neural pathways in the brain in order to accommodate multiple languages. Plus, you get to look at the world through different lenses and you get to be able to be, get a head start on being innovative because you have got different cultural lenses that you can apply. Um, anyway, so that's primary school. In secondary school, um, we want to be able to work with you so that our young people going into year nine are making good choices about the subjects and the unit standards and achievement standards that they are doing. So that when they get to year 11 and 12 and 13, they have got a good set of those that make a meaningful qualification that allow them to choose a vocational pathway that leads to a job. Now, one of the things that I hear as I go around the country is the level of unemployment amongst Pacifica and Māori youth. That will continue until we get better skills and qualifications. Because when an employer is looking to employ, and there are a lot of people, they are going to choose the one with the highest level of skills first, every time. So we have to make sure that our young people are in that category, that they have those skills, that they will get the opportunities for good jobs and good career pathways. Um, so that's what I want to work with you on. Education, 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 education. Supporting community-led um, Pacific languages, and particularly in the early childhood years, and on youth and skill development. Those are the three major priorities I have for the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs and we will be working with the Ministry of Education to boost those resources and so that we can really get some measurable gain in this area. So I'm going to finish off now because it is quite warm in here. It's actually quite cold out there and I hope you've noticed all of you that I'm wearing my Canterbury colours today <laughs> um, and to show support for Canterbury. Um, but before I sit down, the other thing I want to just say is to congratulate Samoa on its 50th anniversary this year in June. So that is a major celebration um, and one that I particularly want to acknowledge. Can I just say as a little side like, because as, as I say, I have a home in Porirua. And congratulate Toma for greeting the French as well. Oh, <laughs> oh look, I had no voice left at the end of that game. <laughs> And my red T-shirt was just soaked. I can feel me losing my voice again. <laughs> just screaming for it. And I mean, wasn't the World Cup a wonderful way of displaying the cultural differences and distinctiveness about the Pacific? So we want to encourage more of that as part of who we are as Aotearoa New Zealand, a Pacific country. So I will work as hard as I possibly can with and for you. I promise to bring um, passion and energy and um, as much resource as I can argue for, um, not just in the Ministry of Pacific Island Affairs, but securing the trade training places that we've been able to do out of TEC. Um, MPIA has worked really well with the churches to find the young people to get those trade training opportunities. MPIA has established the Pacific Employment Support Services and last year worked with over 330 young people to get them into jobs. Um, so although MPIA is small, oh, you know what? We get fined if we have that on it. <laughs> <laughs> Parliament, thank you much. Um, so MPIA, although it is small, can do um, you know, really well targeted um, programs that can make a big difference. But I really want to manage your expectation about what they can do. And to tell you that there are a range of other government departments that do need to be responsive to your needs and I'm going to be working with NPIA to identify how we can ensure that that is the case. Okay, so that's, that's all from me at this time.
I look forward to meeting you over the next um, three years. Um, and I'm sure we're going to have a great time together. And you should feel free, however, to share your ideas with the MPIA. They are in the idea collection business. So if you've got ideas about how we can improve, then you should um, make sure that you do talk to the staff because they are willing to listen, um, they are willing to do whatever they possibly can, but they and I can't do everything, and nor should we, because you are capable, competent people yourselves, and together we can make a difference. So thank you for having me here this afternoon, and we'll chat a bit um, before I have to go to the Canterbury Trades. Is that where I'm going next, Jim? Yes, Canterbury Trades. Um, but thank you, and I will be back again. So in the meantime, can I ask my colleague Alfred, who we're delighted has joined us in Parliament this year, um, um, together with Pesita Sam Blotuinga, who's also part of our caucus, and who is unable to be here today. It may surprise you to know that when Parliament sits, you have to get leave to be able to go, just like you have to get leave to go away from your job or from school or from Parliament. Only so many of us can have leave at any one time. Alfred and I are lucky. We, we got the leave to come to Canterbury. Sam's not able to, but he sends his best wishes as well, as does our Prime Minister. So if I could just ask Alfred to say a few words and to thank you once again for spending this small part of your day with us. あ、もう、あ、キラナタとかとトルマトティトとティオタメタ。ここからね、ここからね、キラナキャブ。あ、とこにはやっぱり見つこれんがろ。ここパパ、ゲンヨンがろ。あ、たがたあっぱいちたけ
So I rebelled against that, and sure enough, when I left school, what did I do? I went on to do a trade. In fact, I actually was a Māori peer apprentice. You know, I was one of those uh, those islanders that thought, oh yeah. They said, are you Māori? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, one thing that when I grew up is that our know, older people used to say to us sometimes, and uh, can you speak the language? You know, and then in this essence of fluently. And uh, you say, oh, kare, which means no. And they say, kare koe te mete kukare, mani koe te mete in New Zealand Māori. You are no longer the son of Cook Island, you are a son of New Zealand. Now, they may laugh, and they did at their time, but, but for those of us that were there, it just tore us apart. Because we said, so then who to whom do we belong? So hence began the journey of many of us being New Zealand born of this journey of a sense of identity. And I think one of the, the, the greatest challenges for us as Pacifica people, and for all people in that sense, is finding a sense of identity of who am I? So I did everything. So we joined the Kapahaka group. So I was in Hawaii and Waititi Morai. In fact, Peter Shabbos was a Kapahaka tutor. And, and I tell you, it was amazing because, man, the tutors were like, man, you know, you island boys are really good away. Because, you know, your hoopi was coming out, the eyes were coming out. Really man, we were the whole nine yards because everything and anything that we did, we wanted to be the best because we, what we were doing was actually trying to find a sense of belonging. That's what it was about. And I suppose we got involved in all of those things. So I was a Māori pre-apprentice with the Dolman Hostel, played in the Māori uh, games that we had there. Um, but I did a trade and I was an electrician as a trade. And so for me, that's how I started again to trades. And what I actually appreciated about the Minister was talking about education is sometimes our view, even as Pacific, we think the highest sort of achievement is to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, you know. When in actual fact, I don't think it is that way at all. I think if anything, the highest achievement is what we can give to our kids so they become confident and competent in whatever they are doing. And my mother, tried, oh, just the, the other week, someone tried to say to me, you know, Alfred Kentner, have you ever lived on the minimum wage? And I said, guess what? I was raised on the minimum wage. I said, when mum and dad came here, mum worked at the Intercontinental Hotel washing dishes in the day and at night, she cleaned at the Newton Post Office. My brother Danny and I, when we finished at Richmond Road Primary School in Ponsonby, we wouldn't catch the bus, we had to walk to Newton Post Office, push the buzzer, and mum would let us in, we wish it wasn't meant to, but we'd sneak in and we'd learn how to sweep, use the buffer machine, you know, the, the, the shine the floors. I made a few holes, but I didn't know how to do it properly the first time. But that's what we did, and we'd go home at night at 10 o'clock, have a cup of tea with Mussy and the, the, the cabin bread, and that was us. You know? And so, to me, um, here's the thing, is that people keep saying education is the key. Can I say to you, I don't believe education is the key at all. Education is a powerful tool. You can write a book, you can build a bomb, and everything in between. Education is... But, and here's the reason why I say that before you all you know, get angry and stone me. Okay? <laughs> I believe attitude is the key. And the reason I say that is that, like the minister, my mother and my father came here with an attitude to succeed. They had a dream that they wanted to succeed. Um, attitude is the key is that when my grandmother refused to speak Papa English... So she spoke to me in Te Reo, in, in Ao Reo. And that's how I, I came to understand our language. Attitude is the key, is because despite the fact that there weren't many opportunities, they went looking for them, and they made every effort. But here's the thing that I think that when you do, is if you combine attitude with education, now you have the power to transform you, your family, your, your, your community. You can do immeasurably more than you ever thought possible. And that's a proverb quoting their minister. I thought I'd put that in. A uh, bit of theology there. But it's powerful because we combine attitude with education and that's the power to change and transform things. I absolutely believe in what the minister is saying, which is that we didn't come here to be dependent on anyone. And I remember being in, in a meeting, we were talking about housing, and I said, can we change the meeting? Can we ask anyone who doesn't belong to this community to go? And we shut the doors, we closed the curtains, and just us. And I said, right, now that everyone's gone, because it's like this, when there's outsiders in the room, it doesn't matter how bad it is in our community, we'll always defend the path. That's right, that's what we do, isn't it? You know, when, when there's outsiders coming in to say anything, we'll always defend the path. We're always going to protect our patch in our community. But when they're gone and it's just us, guess what? No more romancing the stone. We talk about what is real for our community. And I believe those are the things that we need to do. We need to have that attitude where we stop for a minute, tell all the outsiders just to go out for a moment, close the doors and say, okay, what are we going to do to address the things that are important for our communities. How are we going to make a difference? And when we start, that's, that should be our starting point, 
And then everything else from the outsider is what they can do to support that, not what who drives that. And it's us and our community, your leaders that are here, both young and old, and I love the spiky hair that's here, okay, we met last year, okay? It's a reflection of the diversity that we have, okay? And I think it's really important. And it's important to keep the balance because we need the wisdom of those of the old. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you a little story, you know, people say, oh, because of my grey hair that I'm old, okay? And I'd just like to say, well, because the, the Bible says in Proverbs, actually, Grey hair is like a crown of wisdom. You like that? Um, but in, and I went to the shopping with my daughter once at Glasson's, and then uh, I was paying for it, because that's what your daughters do, they make you pay for things. And then um, the girl at the counter said, excuse me, can I ask you something? And yes, who does your highlights? <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'm not sure what I meant to do with parents like that. But we need both the wisdom of experience of the old, and we need the youth and energy that comes from our youth and our young people. It's not an either or. We need us to be combined together, and I think that's what we're driving to make the difference as well. So I just want to end on that. My role is to absolutely to support the minister in her role. Um, we've set up a Pacifica caucus. So for the first time uh, in the National Party, we've got a Pacifica caucus. What we intend to do is to make sure Pacifica issues are at the forefront. Okay? But we, as we do that, all we're saying is that we'll create, open the doors, create the opportunities, but for you in this community of Christchurch, then it's up to you to go in there and take a hold of them. And actually take a hold of this object and make the most of it as well. So um, we hope that this is the first of many times that we'll come, not just to say hello, but actually roll up our sleeves, take off, undo our ties, and work with you in community, and that's really important as well. Nō reira, tō tātou community, e te mana, e te kaka, e te mana, e te tātou kiriti tēnē rā. Um, if I could borrow a bit of theology, I think it's in Proverbs that says people without a vision, they perish. And I think with the minister this morning and uh, Alfred, we've been given a vision for our Pacific people. So thank you very much for those inspiring uh, presentations. On behalf of the community, I'd just like to call upon uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Malakai Kolomatangi, if he could uh, come forward and just provide a quick response to the speeches this morning. Thank you. <coughs>
to bombard you with issues and questions. I don't want to chase them away. <laughs> so, uh, uh, because we want you to come back, I'm not going to do that. So, but I thought one uh, concept is very important to us here, but she did this idea of resilience. And uh, we are a vulnerable community in the best of times. And, and you have quite just exposed our vulnerabilities even more. But everything is a silver lining, I think. And, and, and the earthquake and the issues around the earthquake and so on brought us together and united us. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, you've heard of uh, the passing away, except uh, passing away of uh, one of our community leaders here, Reverend Faretolo. Uh, uh, we had that funeral in the midst of destruction in the city. And that, to me, is a, is a reflection of the spirit of, of the Sri It allowed us to find comfort in each other and united us. In, 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 a, in a way, it also served to uh, remind us of who we are as a people, as, a, as, as migrants, as Indian born, as island born. So identity is very, very important this time. And because of this unity, of this new community, I am very happy to report that some things are already in motion. For example, uh, there is now talk of perhaps uh, creating a Pacific Council uh, for Christchurch for Canterbury, so that there's uh, one voice when we're speaking to you and the government and so on. Uh, that, that idea uh, will obviously uh, progress in the future. Um, we're already looking at working with other uh, tertiary education uh, providers to ensure that uh, our Pacific students uh, get a, a opportunity come and study Canterbury or CPIT or Lincoln. Uh, so I was going to ask you for some money for some scholarships, but I'll do that in the future because of the time strains. But we're really uh, happy to have you here, and, and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to work together. I hope that in the future we're, we're able to work uh, to keep us here, because this is our place. We have made the choice to remain in Christchurch whilst others have before. But this is our place, this is our home, this is our Toronto Waiwa, this is our Marae, our village. So I hope you will, we will work together to, to allow us to remain here in a, in a, in a, in a prosper uh, for us, and our children, and our grandchildren. Thank you very much. Dr. Kolomatangi, thank you for those uh, kind words on behalf of the community. Uh, what will happen now is we'll, we'll close our, our program, the formal part of our program with uh, a prayer. And uh, is Papa John here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you could come forward and just uh, offer a word of prayer and uh, a blessing for the food. And there will be an opportunity for you to mix and mingle with the minister, Mr. Parata, and uh, Alfred uh, after the formal part of the program is closed. Thank you. Yes. Before... Uh, I say a prayer. Yeah. Thank you very much for all of us for coming under this shade this morning. Doesn't matter if it's rain or wind. It's all nice over here this morning. Let's us pray. Kore tato ki te tua e to mato me tua tapu te mato te mu e to orori te te ki atanga ne ta mato kaka e ta mato kainu. A Rutra Matuya Koi Tiene, a Tuata Watu. Amen. Amen. Amen.